So today I will talk about volume upper bounds for Kalanishan q Fano varieties, and this is partly joined with Chile. Mm, first, let me introduce the notion of q Fano, which is a little bit different from some of the previous talks. So, okay, so today I will work over the complex numbers, and the talk will have some content in differential geometry, although it's not it's easy to understand. Um, okay. So a normal projective variety X is said to be Q funnel if X has KLT singularities and uh, minus KX example Q Cartier. So in this setting, we require the singularity to be called matalog terminal instead of terminal in some contexts like birational rigidity, I guess. So this is important for us. And uh, we will be interested in studying the volume of such q final varieties, which is defined as the top intersection, self-intersection number of the anti-canonical divisor where and denote the dimension. Okay, so let's review some known results in just studying simply these Q-funnel varieties or funnel manifolds without any geometric condition like Keller Einstein. So if X is a smooth Final variety or manifold, maybe. Then, if dimension of X is one, two, or three, then we know that the volume is actually uh, at most the volume of Pn, which is n plus one to the power of n. And uh, this result for dimension one and two are quite easy. Dimension two is, one is just P1, dimension two are del peso surfaces, and the volume is less or equal to nine. For dimension three, this I think requires like some classification, so threefold by Mori and Mukai in the 80s. And starting from dimension four, uh, the volume of X can be larger than the volume of Pn. So if dimension of X is at least four, then we know that we still have a uniform upper bound Cn of the volume depending on the dimension n. And uh, this is due to Color, Miyoka, Mori, and also Kapana in 92. So this CN is a constant depending on the dimension. And, uh, and also there exists some examples such that the volume is actually bigger than n plus one to the power of n, which is the volume of Pn. So, let X be a P1 bundle over Pn minus one, defined by this projectivization of a trivial line bundle direct sum with O n minus one. And you can check that X is a final variety by just computing the intersection number of minus K with the effective curves or the lines. Um, and uh, also, some simple computation shows that the volume is equal to this quantity. So, 1 over n minus 1 times 2n minus 1 to the power of n minus 1. And you see that as n grows larger, then this should be definitely larger than this quantity because the leading term they differs like 2 to the n divided by n. So it's more or less 
2 to the n divided by n times n plus 1 to the power of n. But for small n's, you see like for n equal to 2, then you know that this is like blow up a point on P2. So x is blow up a point on P2. So in this case, if you plug in the numbers, you get 8, which, you know, corresponds to our knowledge. And if n equal to 3, then the volume is equal to 62, I guess, which is still smaller than n plus 1 to the power of n, which is 64. But starting from dimension 4, then it goes larger. Well, I didn't compute the number out, but it should be large. Yeah. Yeah, trust me for this arithmetics. <laughs> Okay, so, so in this talk, we will try to com compare the volume with the volume on Pn, imposing some, uh, some condition, um, like Carl Einstein condition. Uh, but before, let me also recall some singular cases. So if x is only a, a Q funnel variety, with dimension at least a two, then we know that the volume is not bounded. Then minus kx to the power of n is not bounded from above. That's why in the study of boundedness of singular final varieties, we'll always require like a uh, minimal log discrepancy stuff condition because the singularity can be very bad and and the simple example is to consider this weighty projected spaces so x equal to p with index a0 to a n and we know that minus k will be just all a a0 plus up to a n and so if you compute the volume, then it will be uh, a0 plus up to a n to the power of n divided by the orbital index, which is a0 times a n. So this number will grow very large for some very special a's. So simply you put some of the a's very small and some of the a very large. And and then you see, for example, a0 equal to a n minus 1 equal to 1. And uh, let's say a n equal to d. Okay. Then we have this x, which is given by p1, 1, and d. So there are n minus, uh, sorry, n ones in this setting. And this is just the cone over p n minus 1 with uh, normal bundle, I should say projective cone. It's normal bundle O D. So for this simple example, you just plug in the numbers to that formula, you get um, this is the sum of A's, which is N plus D to the power of N divided by the product, which is D. So as you see that when d goes to infinity, this goes to infinity. And in the view of this discrepancy stuff, that means the discrepancy of this x goes to log discrepancy, goes to zero. Okay, any questions? Okay, good. So now let's study the, um, where's the eraser? Yeah. So let's study Kala Einstein Q final varieties, which we have a pretty nice uniform volume on our bounds. Okay, so definition. So a Q final variety X is Kala Einstein, if there exists a Kala metric, so let's say omega 
on the smooth part of X such that we have this constant rich curvature condition and also the volume of omega is the same as the anti-canonical volume of X. So, mm, such that the Ricci form of omega is equal to omega. This is the original Keller-Einstein condition on smooth manifold and also the differential geometry volume of omega on the smooth part is the same as the volume considered as a algebraic final variety. Okay, so this this also sometimes called um, weak Kalanstein matrix, but in this in this talk I will just stick to Kalanstein matrix. What's this talk? Okay. Well, I guess uh, I guess the the thing here is that omega is only determined like a distribution. It's not actually a form, so that's why they call it weak. Because because you verify this something like here uh, or this condition using distribution setting, yeah. So that's why they call it weak. So omega using distribution. Well, it. Uh, I mean, on the next leg, it's anonymous. Yes, yes, but at the singular point, maybe. But there you must be. Well, you can require the continuous extension. I see. Yeah, yes, maybe. Um, yeah. So, um, so this is Kala Einstein funnel, Q funnel varieties, and uh, so for these very special varieties, we have a nice volume upper bounds given by Fujita last year. So, suppose X is Keller-Einstein, so I will use KE for the abbreviation of Keller-Einstein. Q funnel. Right is then simply the volume is at most the volume of m plus 1 to the power of n. And also Fujita also characterized the equality case when x is smooth. So uh, equality and uh, x smooth implies that x is isomorphic to Pn. So in fact, this smoothness condition can be uh, resolved in in my theorems. Uh, maybe I don't have time to talk about it, but in general, uh, you don't need to assume this smoothness condition. Okay, so let me give you some ideas of how this Kelly-Einstein stuff related to algebraic geometry. Um, so usually there are two ways of study of these Kelly-Einstein uh, metrics because first we can study uh, the obstructions. So that means if your X is uh, Keller-Einstein, then it must satisfy some necessary conditions. And also we can study the existence, um, where I'm, I'm not going to talk about it a lot in this talk, because as you see, Fujita theorem gives you a necessary condition given by the volume, right? If you have a bigger volume variety, then it's not Keller-Einstein by this theorem. Okay, so first let me talk about obstructions. So the first obstruction, I guess, in history is given by uh, Matsushima in 1957. So he showed that, so he considered the smooth case, okay. So, okay, so we always assume that X is Kyle Einstein, so assume. So, uh, yeah, kill fun. Okay. 
you say Kailash, thank you for no right. So what Masuchima show is that if X is smooth, then this impose the, uh, the restriction on the automorphism groups. So his conclusion is that the automorphism group has to be a reductive algebraic group. So um, as we see that before, so remember the example I talk about, um, which acts as the P1 bundle over Pn minus one. And if you look at the automorphism group of this X, then it's no longer reductive because you have a different index of these line bundles. So if you lift to the automorphism of the vector bundle, you know, like O maps to O n minus one, but not vice versa. So you get some like a upper triangular matrix like this. So that's why this is not Kyle Einstein using simply Matsushima's criteria. Not Kyle Einstein. And then, um, if we look at X is a smooth log uh, sorry smooth del Pezzo surface, then Matsushima tells us by Matsushima. We know that the automorphism group is reductive, hence X is not a blow up of P2 at one or two points, one point or two points. Because when you uh, blow up a point on P2, then you look at the automorphism group. That will be something like this. So this is one point. Uh, you have two zeros and you have some stars for these block matrices and also for two points you have just simply a upper triangular matrix which is not reductive. Okay, any questions? And in fact, uh, that direction the converse direction is also true by Tian's work in 1990. So maybe I'll also start to talk about some existence, although this is not the major part of this talk. So, uh, so Tian showed that um, the converse is true for del Pezzo surfaces. So namely, the Matsushima obstruction is the only obstruction. For surfaces, uh, smooth surfaces. But in general, in higher dimensions or singularity cases, um, more and more obstructions pump out that you may have an X with, which has no automorphism group or no holomorphic vector fields, but it still doesn't admit any Kalanstein metrics. So this gives rise to the concept called K stability. So which is introduced by by Tian and then later reformulate by Donaldson. Maybe I should say some time. Okay. And I will not define case stability if, because I don't think I have enough time, but maybe just discuss some of the ideas here. So the ideas are considering uh, some one parameter uh, degeneration of this variety X into 
some variety x0. And this is actually a polarized uh, degeneration. So you can consider embed x into a very high dimensional projective space and you use a one parameter automorphism group of the projective space to degenerate. So like sigma t is uh, uh, one parameter group in this PGL m plus one. And then you consider this sigma t x degenerates to some limit variety, which is x0. And then you study the so-called uh, donaldson futaki invariant, or CM weight. So donaldson futaki invariant. So this is uh, a variant of this uh, hilbert Mumford weight for this uh, one parameter degeneration. So it's related to this so-called child stability, but it's more like a symptotic version. Um, so it's related to Hilbert Mumford weight for this degeneration. And we call that a variety is K uh, polystable or semi-stable. So I should maybe So this corresponds to the weight being non-zero, uh, sorry, being non-negative and polystable imposed like a, a like a characterization on the e equation case, on the zero case. So that means this donaldson fotaki invariant is bigger than zero and zero if x zero is like isomorphic to x for polystable. K polystable. And also there's a concept called K-stable, which is the strongest, and it doesn't fit, fit very well in the existence of Kalle-Einstein metrics because that requires the automorphism group to be finite. So a theorem is that, uh, so Tian in 1997, and also Berman in 2012. So they show that if X is a Keller Einstein Q final variety, in fact, Tian shows it for a smooth case, then this implies that X is K polystable. And this is also like an obstruction of the existence of Kalanshan metrics. And from the existence side, there's this recent uh, big papers which claimed the other direction from uh, for smooth cases. So, so if X is a smooth final variety, then theorem, then x is k polystable implies x admits Kalle-Einstein matrix. So this is due to Tian and Chen, Donald Sun in 2012. But, uh, but this direction is not known for singular or Q final variety. Okay, so, so these are the K polystable or K semi-stable part. And, uh, and there's also like a existence theorems, which because, because for this K polystable to be true, you, you see that we have to verify all kinds of uh, degenerations, which it, it acts in base into a very high dimensional projective space, and you check all the one parameter groups, which is pretty hard to check. Um, so, so we have this alpha invariant after Tian and uh, 
the Mai color. Which, um, if you have a, a, your variety satisfies some log canonical threshold condition, okay, so I will state here, zero. Then there exists a Keller Einstein metric. And this is a very nice invariant to check. Uh, we have lots of methods to study the log canonical threshold, so, which is pretty good. Um, so we define this alpha x to be the infimum of log canonical threshold of x uh, with respect to the divisor d, where d is q linearly equivalent to minus kx and uh, d is effective. So then the theorem says if alpha of x is sorry, strictly bigger than n divided by n plus one, then there exists a Keller Einstein metric. I think their theorem is for orbit folds, right? Yes, maybe for smooth orbit folds. This is the Michael. Okay, so you see that there are some interplays between this Keller Einstein stuff and the birational geometry, which we care about, this log canonical threshold stuff. I think in the classification or this boundedness thing, we, like tigers in log del puzzles, you care about such divisors. Okay, and uh, the final remark is that this weighted projective space, P1, 1, and D, is not Keller Einstein, of course, from, our, from Fujita theorem, but that's like overpowered. It, it can be checked by either using the automorphism group, so the automorphism group is not reductive, this is like a singular version of Matsushima, and also by uh, case, uh, case stability, which we have a weaker, a weaker version called Ross Thomas slope stability. So this essentially tells us a very nice way to verify if a, if a, if a final manifold the, the anti-canonical divisor is very divisible. So they show that um, if x is Keller Einstein, uh, I think they assume like orbifold uh, in their final version. Keller Einstein orbifold, smooth orbifold. Then the index is uh, at least, at, I think at most m plus one. The index, let me denote it by Q, of x is at most m plus one, where this Q is defined to be the supremum of such Q, maybe as a rational number, such that minus kx is Q linearly equivalent to some Q times d, where d is an effective Way divisor. So for uh, weighted projective space, you always have the, the least weight give rise to a way divisor or hypersurface. And you see that this number for, uh, for projective, weighted projective space will be the sum of, so Q of weighted projective space PAI will be the sum of ai's divided by a0, which um, is bigger than m plus y if the exponents are not uh, equal. Okay, questions? Yeah, these are the properties of structure and existence of Keller Einstein varieties and 
Um, you mean this one? Oh, the my color. I, I guess so. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. So up to my knowledge, they use it for orbifold, like uh, the alpezos, lock the alpezo surfaces. Yeah, they use a lot. But for arbitrary KLT, I don't know. Oh, maybe that's true. Maybe it follows by Odaka and Sano's work. Yeah, maybe. Yes, yes. So if I remember correctly, they show that, um, so if the alpha invariant is at least and uh, sorry, strictly bigger than n divided by n plus one, then then x is k polystable for singular, maybe. I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, but that's from my memory. Thank you. Okay, so theorem A. So this is what I proved for singular Keller Einstein final manifolds. So we expect a better volume bounds if X admits some singularities, which is completely local. Uh, so we have this result. So let's say Z is a closed sum scheme. And uh, we assume that Z is actually supported at a single point. So that means it's zero dimensions. It's like a thickening of a closed point. Then I have this volume upper bound, which is given in terms of the singularity of Z. So we have a factor, one plus one over n to the power of n times the log canonical threshold, which you've already seen in the alpha invariant, but this is different, times the multiplicity. So here, the alpha invariant is with respect to the ideal of Z rather than a divisor. So you extend uh, your definition to this sense and times the Hilbert-Samuel multiplicity. Okay, this seems like a complicated uh, formula if you have no idea what these quantities are and you try to take their product. But in fact, uh, this is a very nice formula in some good settings for some good singularities. Okay, so we give some remarks. So first, um, if you take, if you take Z equal to P, that means they have the same ideal, maximal ideal, and a smooth point. Then we know that the log canonical threshold of a maximal ideal at a smooth point is equal to the dimension. And also the multiplicity is equal to one. So that means this formula recovers Fujita's formula. So recovers Fujita's upper bound. Okay, or well, maybe I should remark zero, because I think I thought about it before sleeping. Um, so this LCT and multiplicity, uh, they only depends on the germ or the completion of the local ring, which is completely a germ statement, because I remember Professor Collar mentioned in another Uchen's talk, so yeah. Um, so this is actually a germ statement. Okay, so second. Um, so in general, maybe the log canonical threshold is like an infimum of uh, one plus uh, the, it's like log discrepancy divided by the order, which is not easy to get, but 
you can always take one prime divisors over x so that that gives you a, a volume upper bound. So we can always get a volume upper bound by taking one prime divisors divisor over x. And this is pretty nice because you have a lot of freedom to choose the best divisor or the best ideal. Uh, and for quotient singularities or cone singularities, there's a natural choice of those um, uh, prime divisors which gives rise to a sharp inequality over there. As I will show you in theorem B, Okay, so let me state theorem B, which is a benefit of this observation. So X color Einstein Q funnel variety. And I assume that this is like analytically So I assume that X has quotient singularity at a single point P. I do not require X has quotient singularity as everywhere, but only at one point. Then there's some nice geometric thing happens, which we imagine that to be true by taking quotients. Then it's given by the volume of Pn divided by G. So that is a pretty nice formula because the equality is actually sharp uh, if and only if X is isomorphic to Pn mod G. You view this as a compactification of these affine varieties by just adding the quotient of the plane, uh, hyperplane at infinity. And also we require a little condition and We require that G has no scaling matrices other than identity, because otherwise you create a branch locus at infinity. Although this could be fixed when you consider log pairs, then that could be fixed. Okay, so we get a sharp volume upper bounds for Q final, Kyle Einstein Q final varieties with one quotient singularity, which is pretty nice. Uh, no, there's no isolated requirements. Yeah, the only requirement is that I want this to be prime, so so the action should be a tall in co-dimension one, which is standard assumption. Because every quotient singularity can be re reduced to this way, so. And so the rest of the points can be anything? Yes, yes. But KLT? Yes, but KLT, yes. Okay, so the third remark is that we look at the inequality other from the other direction. So we see that for a nice choice of Z or P, we get a volume upper bound. But on the other hand, if you have a priori uh, Kalanistan final manifold, you want to vary your points and your ideals, then you get like a lower bound of this quantity here. LCT to the power of n times multiplicity, which is a purely commutative algebra statement. So if we fix a pair XP so that X is uh, Kelly Einstein Q funnel, and P a uh, close point, then theorem A gives a lower bound of LCT IZ and times multiplicity for C like any thickening of P. And uh, actually this kind of lower bounds was studied by uh, 
Therefore, nay, I am Mushtata um, 10 years ago. And the miracle here is that if we use the, the simplest variety, so if you choose, so let's say x to be pn and p arbitrary point, any point. Then that uh, inequality over there will just give you a simple formula, simple inequality. which we have a lower bound n to the power of n of this invariant. And you see that this, of course, is achieved by that first remark. So this is essentially de Fernay, I Mustata's paper proved. So we give a geometric understanding of this commutative algebra statement, which is pretty nice. And uh, we are not just satisfied by recovering their result, but it, in fact, we generalize their result to a broad setting, which is theorem C. So this is collaboration with Chi Li. Okay, so let me take a final manifold V of dimension n minus one. And I'm considering the affine cone over V as these modeled singularities. Um, okay, so I take H to be the polarization minus RKV, which is uh, Cartier ample. And this R is a positive rational number. So we can form this cone, where which base is V and polarization is H. And it's always denote the cone vertex. Then we may use a logarithmic version of the theorem A to get a nice equivalence. Then V is K semi-stable, which is slightly weaker than Keller Einstein, if and only if we have a definite a mustata, a I mustata type inequality, where the infimum or minimum of this invariant is achieved at the cone vertex, so which is and of course you can compute it out that gives you minus kv to the power of n minus one divided by r. Okay, and uh, I should remark that from my method, uh, together with Chi Li, we show that uh, this direction. So, so this direction is like a consequence of of theorem A, and uh, the other direction was proved by Chi Li himself. Yeah. So because it's mostly harder when you try to show that something is actually case semi-stable. You have to check all the degenerations. But uh, it's nice to have a equality here because that gives us like a two-way of translation. Uh, so if you know such inequality holds, then you actually prove something is case semi-stable. But on the other words, if you know something is case semi-stable, then you have this commutative algebra inequality, which is, um, which is pretty nice, I think. Uh, well, in fact, uh, I think we have a version for uniform case stability. But for polystability, poly I, I don't know. Yeah, maybe there's like an asymptotic like estimate on the, 
on the equality. Yeah, I don't know. So, so Z is any subscript yes. supported on yes. zero or one? Yes, for any Z with support at the cone vertex. So it's like a thickening of the cone vertex. And that the, the final equality holds always, or is that also a condition? Oh, this is automatic true. So yeah, I should put a parenthesis. That's just a simple computation by cones, yeah. OK, so I will discuss the proof of these theorems. Yes, because LV is funnel yeah. here, so you always have KLT yeah, but on the cone vertex. That's fine, but do you have a theorem like that for, for KLT? Is it like the oh, oh, you mean replace the cone, cone singularities to KLT singularities? No, but okay. V, not the manifold, but. Oh, OK, OK. Singular. OK, so I guess um, that we know roughly how to extend it to the singular case. But there's some, some subtlety in this uh, semi-stable thing, uh, which we haven't fixed. So it's more or less true, yeah. But you need to be, yes. So we know that like uh, if V is K polystable, let me think, or if it's K semi-stable, then, well, maybe I should assume polystable to imply this part. And the other part is k semi-stable. Yes, but for a smooth final manifold, we are we are fine. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's almost uh, true, but still, little technical issues. Okay. So I will discuss the proof. Uh, first, the theorem A, and this is an application of Fujita's. Uh, observation of this invariant. So first, theorem by Fujita. So let's say x is a Kahn-Einstein q final variety, and uh, z is an arbitrary closed subscheme. Here, z can be of any dimension. Um, not just of dimension zero. And, uh, and then Fujita relates the log canonical threshold of the ideal sheaf of Z with respect to a, like an integration of a volume. Uh, so let me first uh, give these settings. So I denote by x hat to be the blow up of x along z. And uh, I denote by e the exceptional divisor. Which is not always reduced because it's given by O x hat minus e equal to i z sigma inverse i z dot o x hat. So it's a scheme theoretic exceptional divisor. And then Fujita proved that the log canonical threshold times the volume is always at least an integration of the volume of uh, sigma upper star minus k, the pullback of minus k minus x e d e uh, dx. So that means you you sort of look at the positivity of this uh, pullback, and you require like some multiplicity on this uh, on this point x. And uh, of course, you see where x is smaller than the Sarchandri constant, then you get honestly a uh, like a self, a self, uh, self uh, intersection number. But when x goes to larger, like between the Sarchandri constant and the pseudo effective threshold, then you actually get something. That's uh, the major uh, improvement of Fujita's method because before we only know that the integration up to Sarchandri constant. 
by Ross Thomas. Okay, so, so we will apply Fujita's theorem to the proof of theorem A, which is kind of straightforward. Um, okay, so, okay, so back to to the proof of theorem A. So we have this Fujita's inequality is larger than the integration of volume x hat pullback of minus k minus x e dx. And uh, in fact, using this uh, differentiation of volume, which was also talked by previous speakers, that we know that the, the derivative of this volume function is like a, a constant times the restricted volume. So because there's a negative sign here, so I will add a negative sign over there. And it's going to be n times the restricted volume. Restrict on this divisor E of the same line bundle, or Q line bundle, or R, R, line, R divisor, I should say, yes. And we know that the restrictive volume is always smaller than the actual volume because it's like an asymptotic growth so of the, the volume of E and the volume only of the restriction is the divisor you restrict, no? Uh yes. Uh okay. Okay. so I map this linear system to the restriction on E okay. and consider the asympto asymptotic growth. Yes. So it is always uh smaller than the volume of E Oh, maybe uh, you, you may actually write something like this. Yeah, but that's fine. Yeah, but uh, I don't know about the notation. Maybe. So, yeah, it's always less than the volume of E of the restriction of the divisor. And as you see in a theorem A setting, my Z is always supported at a point. So that means there's no contribution from the pullback. So which gives you uh, a nice thing because that will, that means this bundle is always ample as long as x is positive. That corresponds to O E X. So this gives us um, let me see. So I can always replace the volume by the self intersection, which is minus x e restrict on e to the power of m minus one. And uh, we know f f from this multiplicity with these exceptional divisors that this is nothing but n times x to the n minus one times the multiplicity of c x. So the intersection number explanation of multiplicity. So therefore, you get a control on the derivative and uh, so you get another inequality for this volume. So just using simple calculus, then, we have, after integration, this volume of, the, of this Q, sorry, R Cartier divisor will be at least equal to the self-intersection. So, which is minus k to the power of n minus the multiplicity Cx times x n, because they have the same value when x equal to zero, and then you integrate you get the inequality here. And this is pretty nice because then the inequality over there can be integrated. You see we have two larger than or equal to. So that gives us theorem A. Okay, let me quickly finish. Hence. Well, canonical stress hold times minus k to the power of n is bigger than or equal to the integration of maximal minus kx minus 
multiplicity times x to the power of n and 0 dx. And uh, this gives essentially theorem A when you compute the integral out. Okay. So this is the proof of theorem A. And uh, any questions? Okay, so now let's talk about proof of theorem B, which is a nice geometric argument. So we try to find, as I said before, a nice ideal or divisor, whatever, Z, so that the log canonical threshold to the power of n times multiplicity is somewhat small. So I actually want it to be as small as possible so I get the best volume upper bound. And the natural choice here is to look at, instead of ideals, I look at valuations. So we consider this diagram, so I have this Cn and I take the blow up. And now I take the quotient of this blow up because the, huh? Yes, sorry, uh, Cn hat. So because your, your G is acting, you know, I can assume that G is acting linear transformations. So therefore this blow up it will be equivalent uh, as a G action. So I can take quotient of this morphism, which gives us X. Of course, this is not a morphism, but only on the terms, but whatever. By remark zero, it is a term statement. So um, we define this X hat to be the quotient of the blow up. And uh, then we also denote some exceptional divisors F and E to be the corresponding exceptional divisor of these uh, birational morphisms. And then I'm, uh, I'm actually looking at, there's only two minutes, right? Sorry, I need to be sketchy on this part, but. Let me give the names pi hat and pi. Okay, so if you denote this d by the intersection of g with g m the size, then we know that pi hat is actually ranged along uh, e and with a multiplicity equal to d. Uh, sorry, equal to this small d. So that means my pi hat, the quotient map over there, is not a tall in dimension one in general, and I have this multiplicity here. So if I consider this prime divisor f over x, and I want to compute, um, so one plus order f of ks hat mod x, this is the uh, numerator appears in the LCT part or the log discrepancy, and I just compute it out to be n divided by d by that uh, commutative out diagram, because I know that uh, the pullback of f is equal to d times e. So that's why this n divided by d appears. And also I want to compute the order, uh, sorry, the volume of this valuation, this divisorial valuation. So you treat this valuation associated to uh, ideals of this valuation and you compute the volume. It's like the growth of the co quotient of the, of the OX mod by the ideals. And you compute it out, it gives us, um, let me see, gives us D to the power of N divided by G. So this is because order of F is equal to uh, the push forward of order of E divided by, divided or multiply. Um, let me see. Uh, yes, divided by D. 
And if you look at this, this valuation, then that corresponds to you take the G invariant subring of the, of the polynomial ring and you compute the Hilbert Samuel multiplicity of this graded ring. And that gives you this part. So another final remark is that if we study the log canonical threads of multiplicity associated to the ideals, sorry, odd f times the multiplicity of the ideals of odd f, then the limit, I should say limit soup, is actually less or equal to the log discrepancy to the power of n times the multiplicity of volume, volume of order of f. This is just an easy application of the definition over there. And then you compute it out, you get n to the power of n divided by the size of g. And uh, that's why we have the n plus 1 to the power of n divided by g when you multiply that constant. This is the proof theorem b. And I'm sorry I ran out of, out of time. And uh, thank you for your patience. Suppose that you have a uh, Qfano Kähler Einstein variety and that the volume is close to the bound for projective space. Can you show that it has to be smooth? Uh, well, that's something I guess to be true. Okay. Um, but I'm not able to prove it now. I hope to prove it in the future. Yeah. Is there any hope to give some effective bound on the length of these Zs that you have to check? Oh, you mean the ideals over there? Well, in general, it's still an infinite yes, yes. In general, this uh, this infimum cannot be achieved because oh. some of the numbers are irrational. If you check the DK singularities in higher dimensions, oh, so DK singularities no gives you an irrational number. So that's how uh, Chili and Chen Yangxu, they study to look at this um, uh, limit behavior when z has height going to infinity, but you have like a irreducible prime ideals on the blow up. So you try to show they converge to this number in some reasonable sense, geometric sense, yeah. Yeah, they can do some, some KLT, general KLT stuff on this environment. Uh, so you mean it doesn't hold for non-k semi-stable? Oh, you mean my theorems? Yes, actually my theorem can be replaced by k semi-stable. But maybe the equality has to be, it's a little bit subtle. But the equality if and only if, yeah. But if you consider, actually if you consider just Q-fan varieties, then you still get like a volume bound. But it, it will be of course larger. And uh, that larger uh, constant is given by uh, how this variety, the, the metric is, is close to the Kala Einstein metric. There's like a geometric quantity over there. Yeah. But in general, you can get volume bounds for arbitrary Q final, right? Yes. And also, so you, you know the digital theorem, you can have the to show the harsh conjecture without using the reduction module Arshwood's conjecture. But you have to show that it admits a Kyle Einstein metric, yeah, which. But uh, positive tangent bound doesn't mean that there exists a constant rich correction metric. 
Frankenstein man or without the Mobilian? Okay. Okay, now I understand. I don't know. That's the only thing I can say. Yes. 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 Yes.